Okay. All right. Welcome everyone to the City Council meeting for Monday, June 25th. Uh, if we could have a roll call to establish quorum, please, ma'am. Melissa Green. Absent. Terry McClung. Here. Vicki Schneider. Here. Bob Thomas. Here. David Mitchell. Here. And Christy Kendrick is absent with notice. All right. If we could stand and <laughs> pledge your allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Get a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Second. All right. Got uh, any additions? All right, hearing none, uh, motion to approve the agenda is submitted. Sing five by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Second. Any additions, corrections? Hearing none, all those in favor of the minutes as submitted. Sing five by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so, so moved. Uh, under our... Commissions, we have uh, Beverly Abbey, who is uh, presently on the Planning Commission for position four, is uh, reapplying for that position. Uh, so, to make a motion that we re uh, reappoint. Beverly Abbey? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Second. Any comments? All those in favor, sing five by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, we have, because of the Cemetery Commission, has, um, uh, we've, we're down to two people on the Cemetery Commission. Glenna Booth has volunteered to serve uh, on, the plant, on the Cemetery Commission until we can get some additional people on there just to make sure we have a quorum. So that's the reason she has uh, put her application in uh, to be on the Cemetery Commission. I'd like to make a motion to approve Glenna Booth for the Cemetery Commission. Second. Got any comments or questions? All right. Hearing none, all those in favor of Glenna's, please sing five by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. So moved. Uh, public comments. Uh, please limit your comments to three minutes, but uh, <coughs> you've signed up. Please come up and state your name and residence. Council members, appointed members, elected, other elected officials, and uh, city employees. My name's Linda McBride. I live at 264 Spring Street. And we probably need a drum roll and trumpets because I'm here to thank you very much for striping the street up there. It has helped immensely. And it's not 100%. Some people aren't following it, but we've got parking up there right now. And I just want to thank you for the hard work that you did to get that done. Um, one thing, I know you're still working on parking, but you might want to check on especially a uh, extended cab pickup has trouble parking in those spaces. And if you get one with a trailer hitch on it, they can't park. And that's, I see that up there with some people that live. They really have a hard time getting those extended truck pickups in there. Another thing right now, one reason it's working so well, the house at 265 Spring Street is for sale and it is empty, so there's no one there. I don't know what will happen when that sells. Also, the home at 257 Spring Street has not been a tourist lodging since this owner has had it. But they are advertising it for sale as a tourist lodging. So I don't know what will come of that if it goes back to there because right now the parking spaces are full. But I thank you for what you've done and you worked hard and I really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah, Bob Jasinski, 46 Hillside. Uh, tonight, I believe you're going to be taking up the moratorium on uh, bed and breakfast and uh, the ordinances proposed by planning. Now, uh, with regard to uh, the bed and breakfast problem, uh, the real problem arises from the fact that people have been skirting the law with regard to transient lodging or tourist lodging in R1 by going in and 
uh, filing CUP applications for one bedroom bed and breakfast. And the reason for that is to get around the tourist line. You really believe that they're going to be serving breakfast in there. I got some swamp land down in Florida I'd like to sell you. The, uh, the problem can be easily solved in planning. I brought this up in planning. They didn't listen to what I had to say. You solve the problem easy by simply putting in a four unit requirement or a square footage requirement for the bed and breakfast. In other words, like City of Asheville requires uh, at least 3,400 square feet. Other cities have said you have to have at least four units. That gets around, that eliminates this whole problem. Uh, and, and then another thing with regard to the uh, proposed uh, ordinance is a 200 foot rule. Make it uh, applicable in all directions. That isn't going to solve anything unless and until the city begins to enforce the law. The laws on the book says that if you're within 200 feet of existing lodging, you have to get a variance or a waiver. Now what's happening is that they're going in there, nobody is applying the correct law. If you read the law, as I explained last time I was here, it specifically says that you're not entitled to a variance or a waiver unless you can prove that there is no other reasonable use for the property. So in other words, if you're living there or if you're running the property out, you're automatically disqualified. Still, that's not what's happening. That isn't what's happening at all. And there was the case, too, I believe it was uh, 23 Elk Street, where they went down to planning, planning denied it, they appealed it to council, he asked the city attorney his opinion as to whether or not they could appeal it from a denial of planning for a CUP. The city uh, council gave exactly the correct advice to the question asked. The trouble was the, long, the wrong question. They asked, where do appeals from a denial of a CUP from planning go? And the city attorney correctly said, well, they go to the city council. But here's the problem. What happens if they went before the, plan, uh, the uh, Board of Zoning adjust Adjustment and they denied it, which was the case. They denied it at the Board of Zoning. That appeal goes to circuit court. But still, you guys, or I don't know whether all you were on there, you heard the appeal and you granted the appeal and granted the CUP. That's another classic case of spot zoning. You gave them a privilege which no one else in the city could get. 27 seconds up and I'm not even halfway done. Uh, so that, my, <laughs> all right, 21, okay. All right, so that, that's my thing with the 200 foot rule. There's nothing wrong with the laws that are already in existence, just, you know, if you enforce the laws that exist and remember to ask the correct attorney for the city attorney, you know, you might get the correct answer next time. So uh, the other thing I'd just like to bring up, the thing about the one night, uh, night uh, weekly rentals, they want to change the law to allow the illegal weekly rentals to rent by the night. Ridiculous. Thank you. Do you realize how many people Let's you have please to Please state your name. And oh, Betsy Bodier, 20 Fairmont. Do you realize how many people you have truly upset and hurt with your blatant disregard for all the hard work that the Parks Commission, Parks Director, employees and volunteers have put forth for parks? And they have done an outstanding job. So this is a slap in the face to all that hard work with your unreasonable motion of dissolving parks. What are you thinking? Is it the money? That is the one eighth percent tax, or also known as Leatherwood tax. Is this the shameful motive behind this fear based power move? So, by dissolving this Parks Commission, the city may be entitled to use that tax for other city purposes. I realize that the city needs to get money, more money, but this move is an unethical way of obtaining it if you're planning on doing that. How many lawsuits are brought before the courts because of the city's poor decisions in retaliatory ways? 35 Mountain Street comes to mind where the judge in that case ruled that the city of Eureka Springs was being unreasonable to prevent the owner from installing a new roof and siding for his home. How much taxpayers' money did that waste? The motion of dissolving the Parks Commission is another irrational and unreasonable decision that you all are making. Issues with parks need to be resolved in a courteous and beneficial way that puts the best interest of parks above the self-interest of a few. Therefore, I suggest a motion be made to take that decision from the City Council's hands and put it into the voters' hands. And it is very common for Parks and Rep throughout the nation to form local partnerships with organizations 
to the betterment of the cities and citizens. This is not collusion, it is a partnership. The leaders and volunteers of the community center have worked really hard to make this community center concept a reality against all odds and the city needs to stop disparaging the leaders and support their hard work. The community center will enhance the quality of life for everyone. It's a good thing. Please give support to them. They have worked really hard and I'm confused on why you feel the need to even dig into the community center's financials. And then on the moratorium, I feel the moratorium should stay in place to continue to preserve and protect the quality of our neighborhoods and preserve the historic value and economic viability of Eureka Springs. Thank you. Is that it? All right, that's the uh, end of public comments. Thank you all very much. Uh, our uh, next item under unfinished business is uh, Leatherwood sales tax. Get a motion to discuss. So, 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 so second. All right. Um, <coughs> Ms. Snyder, you want to? Um, well, if we can have Lonnie and Justin up to the thing to explain how this works. <laughs> Oh, yes. All right, you're going to yes. tag team each other. And right. All right. Lonnie, you, uh, you're the finance director. You want to explain to the public how, how we handle the sales tax uh, for Lake Leatherwood? Just got okay. Uh, what, what happens currently? What happens currently is on approximately the 25th of the month, we receive uh, the city's sales tax and the park sales tax that's collected by the state deposited into the general fund account for the city. And then uh, that same, at that same time, we get an email that we can access. And uh, this comes in to myself as finance director and to Yvonne Klein, the administrative bookkeeper, this is what it looks like. It has a breakdown of the one, both 1% 1 tax items for the city and uh, one quarter percent for parks and the one eighth cent for um, Lake Leatherwood. So, like I said, this happens on about the 25th of the month. At the end of the month, either myself or Yvonne uh, we call the bank and transfer the funds to parks, to the parks account. Then we forward this information to parks, to the bookkeeper over there, so that they will know how much is Leatherwood tax and they will know how much is for parks. And that concludes our involvement at that time with the parks and Leatherwood tax. Okay, Justin, if you could explain how y'all take care of it after that, please. Okay. Uh, we received two checks, actually, from the uh, city for that, one for the quarter cent tax and then one for the eight cent tax. Uh, the quarter cent goes into our general revenue fund where our cash fund from Leatherwood also goes into the Leatherwood tax money go is dedicated and accounted separately from all other monies. Um, what we're passing out here is a summary. Um, as you guys have seen with our quarterly reports, you really have to kind of dig in and they're hard to get some information out. I've heard comments from a couple council members to that effect. Uh, so this is a summary we generate. Um, this is a monthly sheet we do, the uh, uh, one with the smaller boxes on it. Yes, that one there, Mickey, um, that we generate every month that shows revenue, expenses, occupancy. We've added a spot to the bottom down there where we'll, we'll add our Leatherwood. And we're happy to provide those uh, monthly and quarterly. This is what we generate for our commission. We provide the deeper details anywhere they want to dig in. We, can, we have that information as well. Just makes it a little more digestible. It's something we've been working with since I got here to make this a little more manageable where we're actually seeing the, the in and out of everything in the bank account. So, so the, 
the, the gist of it is this money, the Leatherwood tax money is accounted for completely separately, kept in a different account. We make trains, we actually have a physical different account. It's always off some because of time of the payment or uh, back and forth. So, um, it, it's, it's, it, but it is accounted for completely separately as the, the summary sheet shows you. That is the complete history of what has happened with Leatherwood tax collections to date. Um, the only thing not on there are current allocations uh, for future spending. Um, and, and that is how we take that. That is uh, our spending is reviewed every year by legislative audit. They pull our minutes for the allocations uh, to make sure that that's, that's what's going on. And uh, we've had this tax for four years now and had no uh, findings against us uh, through those audits. So. Um. Okay. Lonnie, do you see any reason or need for you or your department to take this over from parks? I don't see any reason for us to do that. Um, the uh, <clears throat> the it's kept separately all the way through the system. Uh, it's accounted for, and we too legislative audit audits our side, and they have at least since I've been here have never uh, brought up an issue with the method, the methodology, or anything with us. We've never been reported whatsoever. And um, I believe that um, this has been run by mayor, and correct me if I'm, in, if I'm misstating anything here, but by the attorneys at the Arkansas Municipal League. And the last report that I saw, and there may be others that I haven't seen, but uh, there was, at, in their opinion, no need for any change to the procedure that we're doing currently because the procedure was explained to them exactly, just as I told you. And uh, so uh, uh, did I get that correct, Mayor? That's uh, correct. That's what, I, that's what I read anyway. Well, then so. I would sit there and say simply because our finance director and our parks director and our municipal league, all three are very happy with the way things stand. I make a motion that we leave things as they are and keep our little mitts off. I'll second that, but David wants to talk. Well, we'll this discussion time. Okay. David? Yeah. The issue only came up because the municipal league responded to a question that was posed to it and their last comment was, thus the city council does control the fund, but the funds can only be used for those purposes related to Leatherwood City Park. Ultimately, the policy decisions of funding the Parks Commission is up to the city and can only be addressed by the city council. So since city council is obviously accountable and responsible fiscally for the fund, it's imperative that we have the correct information to, to, to have in front of us on the quarterly basis which is required by municipal code so that we can track that just as well. Nobody said that it's being absconded or Justin bought a new pickup truck or something <laughs> with it or is out there partying. That's not it. But if the council is accountable and responsible, council should get some type of report which obviously Justin has provided here. And this must be the Leatherwood tax. That, that's the summary from start to current. And it shows that. over here, which is great, it shows over here camping cabins, right. reno boats. So it very clearly shows that it's being spent on Lake Leatherwood. Correct. Likewise, this piece of paper is also pertinent for any of the taxpayers in this town that sure. voted for that tax. Mm -hmm that you're proving to all the citizens here that the Lake Leatherwood tax that they supported and gave to you and are paying on is going to where it was supposed to be going. And I think that is was the whole issue behind it. Again, because the Municipal League very clearly said that that Leatherwood tax is accountable to City Council and City Council should be doing their fiduciary responsibility. Sure, and I, I would I would say in a procedural manner, I would say City Council and the City appropriates this fund. The yeah. Park Council allocates this fund and yeah. spends it. So that would be done either whatever mechanism 
the council would like to do. But that's a great letter. report to, to send on a well, There is one, one thing at the very bottom. Uh, the, the, that one's more of a, not the Leatherwood report, the other one, that number for the Leatherwood balance is actually inaccurate. I think it's off by about three grand or something. But that'll be more of an example if this would suit your needs. That was part of why I brought this was will this serve those quarterly reports? Certainly could have the ability, if you have questions, to drill down and we could provide more. But would this be the type of... Would this meet those needs in a simple way and meet that standard for a quarterly report to, to the council? Does there's, that? There's six of us here, but that's a pretty good report. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Yeah. Yes, sir. I'm not really sure what Ms. Schneider's talking about keeping our Mets off. I never really wanted to put my Mets on. <laughs> uh, this is the budget document for the city and every month I go through it and I've looked very closely at it because I'm responsible for managing the city's finances. I wasn't aware until six weeks, two months ago that I was responsible for managing Lake Leatherwood's finances. You're not. Good, and according to, according to the municipal <laughs> league, we are the city council is responsible. Has uh, a semantic right. argument Managed. between funding. I'm not and saying. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't, don't want to manage your money any more than I manage Dwayne Allen's money. What I'm saying is, now I know I'm supposed to look at your reports every month, as opposed every to saying every quarter. Well, every quarter, you know, as opposed to thinking, well. I have no responsibility for that. I don't really need to pay attention to it. Sure. So I, I do think we need to put our mitts on it and, and give the same attention to the, to the budget and the reports that come from Lake Leatherwood that we do to the city's budget report. That's all that the Municipal League said. That's right. Yes, ma'am. The <laughs> mitts comment was in regards to the council person who wanted us to be totally in control of their money. That's what that was in regards to. Everything is working fine. It should just stay as is. Mr. Mitchell? No, it was addressing the question that the Municipal League had, and it posed the question very seriously. If we're fiduciarily responsible for it, what reports are we getting, and how do we know we are, and how are we doing our due diligence uh, that we are elected to do for the citizens of this community in assuring that the Lake Leatherwood tax was done. It wasn't questioning Justin. It wasn't questioning Parks. It wasn't saying that we wanted to control the money and they had to beg us for it. That was not there. Somebody's read something into it that was never said. No, it that was, was on your side. Clear. I'm not talking right. about One you. at a time, please. It was very clearly related to questioning what the Municipal League had said and to be sure that we were doing our due diligence in, in knowing what was going on. That was it. Mr. McClellan? Okay, so this is where we are at this point. So, I mean, are you satisfied or what is it? Where do you want to go from here? I'm not sure I understand what we what? don't need to go anywhere. It's it's fine. We have okay. a report. If all if there's six people sitting at this table, if the six people sitting at this table that were elected like this report, then it's done. We we actually have the motion to leave it like proceed as we're doing. Oh, she yeah. did. Yeah, I did second. I mean, I think that was the motion. Was that not? Yes. Yeah, yes, all right. Uh, that's ended. that's where we are, Mr. Thomas. The, the motion was to keep our mitts off and I really the, the motion that. was to leave everything uh, leave everything alone <laughs> right leave it as is I so you said keep your mitts well, off that was a comment all now. right come on come on the motion I think I'm restating it is to leave things alone as they are now that's the motion any further comments on the motion Mr. Thomas I would question whether or not we actually have to approve the budget for Lake Leatherwood the annual budget. We're dealing with, with the motion. I, I'm not sure that's a, a question for this motion at this point. Well, if we do have to approve the, their budget, that would not be leaving things as they are because we've never approved your budget before. I, I don't believe. I, I don't think we're approving their budget. No, we're not. That's no more than we're approving the CAPC's budget. But 
we review we review their financial statements as per the city, as per the ordinance. Okay. So the motion is we're leaving the budget as it is, leaving the I mean leaving the uh, everything alone. Any further discussion? All those in favor, sing Bob, saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain. Abstain. Three zero two. I'll say yes. Make it four. Correct. Okay. And the reason you can vote that way again? It's to, because I can vote to pass a motion. Okay. If I don't vote, the motion fails. Okay. So, all right. Next item, uh, motion to uh, discuss, and I, we may want to take this one at a time. We have five, how many ordinances do we yes. have? Four or five? Yes, uh, five. Five? Yeah, let's uh, get a motion to discuss, motion I guess, first thing. Get a second? Second. All right, we have, uh, Mr. Weaver has given us some five ordinances here. Oh, that's what this is. Okay. Would we like to, I think we need to look at these one at a time. Please. Are they, are they for five separate different things on that need to be? Mr. Weaver, would you like to explain what yes. you've given us? Actually, I have submitted to the, the city clerk seven ordinances at this point, which are breakouts of various parts of what planning is asked. There are still several more to come, but I did not want to burden the council with 12 to 14 motions at one time. Mm -hmm. So I believe there are five before you tonight. One of the ones that I drew uh, after uh, receiving a comment from mayor's office earlier today needed to be withdrawn anyway, potentially because of what planning is changing potentially on bed and breakfast. But I believe you have five tonight to look at uh, we can certainly have the rest for you the next one but I thought it, it would behoove to break them into manageable parts so that they are more easily accessible into our code and that's what I've done is took the first several suggestions combined the ones where I believed it was appropriate and you have five to look at tonight okay then so if we start with this First one that's in the pile uh, in re regarding adoption of plans is that what you want to do is discuss each one at a time and if that's the case what did the old one say well if you have one and I don't know if you all still have but at one point planning had passed out I believe their suggestions this is taking their suggestions and forming them into the new of what would be required to be put into our books. The actual sections that they're either eliminating or amending in certain cases are in that nine page document that they gave you to begin with. So he can look at it if he needs to as we go along. Thank you. That's Mr. Mr. That for me? McClung, yes. Oh, oh, yeah, I need it back because you already have one, but if you want to sure. prepare as we go. Can we share? Sure. And that's also being done in house so that we check off each of the requests as we go with this. What is the, uh, Mr. Mitchell? Yes, sir. I, I think I'd like to make a motion that, well, no, let me ask a question first of the attorney. Did, uh, since you put this into ordinance form, format, has this gone back, has this gone to the, at least the chair of planning to compare to that uh, packet of information they gave so that, David, ex excuse me, I was asking the attorney a, a question. I'd, I'd like to finish. It, it, did this go back to Ann? So we, there has been some communication because this is a lot for us to digest just sitting here tonight. And I was wondering if we might could have some time to, or should we not have some time to read it and compare the. I don't answer that. 
Just a question. I don't believe it has actually been back to the chair or to the planning commission. If you want to uh, put it back there, uh, I certainly understand. I don't think the language varies from mm -hmm. what okay. was in their suggestion oh, in most areas. But uh, if you want their input, that certainly I think is, is logical. Uh, but my understanding at the last council meeting was the council was in a hurry uh, to get this before them and so it is here tonight I think without submission back to planning yet. Well and, and I understand it was a hurry to get it and there's nothing wrong with that but it's it's also I wouldn't want to be a hurry to be passing something that I don't have a chance to compare and, and to the other stuff and, and be sure that I totally understand it, and I'm certainly not going to understand these five sitting here tonight. May I add to that? Um, okay, Madam Clerk, what? When the ordinances came in, the first thing I did is format them and compare them. Then I took, the, took them one by one over to the staff member who built the body of data that Terry is looking at. She also reviewed it, cross-checked it to make sure that what she was looking at matched the request, marked every portion as meeting that standard. She okayed by having cross-checked and done exactly what you just described to make sure that all the language, the code references, the zones, aligned with what planning asked for. So what you are asking for has already happened twice in-house. So with that information you might feel a little more comfortable with Mr. Weaver. Forward. I would also like to uh, point out to the councilman that uh, there is no emergency clause attached to these documents and they won't need to go through the three readings. So okay. it's highly unlikely that any of them are going to become law tonight. True. Uh, but if you, if you don't feel comfortable, I, I'm not here to push you to it. Mr. Thomas? I just have a question because on the very first page, uh, there's one proposed change before your first order. Are you going to go, are these supposed to be in order as it goes through here or is it going to be jumping back and forth? Or? The, the original ordinance that was drafted to match the first proposal right. is the one that is going to probably have to be changed okay. based on what I received from the mayor and so that ordinance is not in your packet. Okay. From there on I believe they're in the same order that the suggestions go. Great. Thank you. Thank you. So what is the race of the council? Ms. Green? We've had these, the planning commission gave them to us a year ago and, and they worked incredibly hard on it. I, I think what I'm reading here, I believe Tim did a good job writing it up and, and I believe it's time to at least read it on the first reading. We can, we're not, there's no emergency, we can look it over in the weeks to come and we need changes, I believe they can be changed. All right, why don't we uh, get a motion, uh, unless there's another comment, to assign the, this uh, item number one, uh, a number and read for the first reading. I have a quick question. All right. Okay, reading through this first one doesn't even make sense to me. Isn't this how things already were? So what change was made? I mean, obviously a change is made, but you have Mr. you have the information there's if you want to go back and check. There's a number under, it says proposed changes to chapter 13.04 yeah. planning commission page 380. And in answer to that, the first oh, line, I see what you're saying. Okay. adoption of plans, it has been defined more exactly. It was a one and a half sentences, now it's four. Okay. And I want to encourage you to bring next time the information that planning provided for you in two different formats, one with the lined out version and one with 
Yeah. But some consider an easier to read version. All right. So, counsel, you want to defer this until next week and bring it back, or do you want to run through this with assign an ordinance number to this first one and read it? I'll, I'll make a motion. I'm probably not going to get it right. Are we going to do all of them at one time? Well, just one at a time. Okay. So this first one here, an ordinance amending Title 13 of the Eureka Springs Municipal Code regarding adoption of plans. It, assign it a number and read assign it for it a first number reading. Read it on first reading. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. I have comments. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That's right, so moved. The ordinance number will be 2269. An ordinance amending Title 13 of the Eureka Springs Municipal Code regarding adoption of plans. <coughs> Whereas the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs desires to amend Title 13 regarding adoption of plans and whereas the City Planning Commission, after public hearing, has recommended the following change. Now therefore be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs that Title 13 of the Municipal Code be amended as follows. Section 1. The opening portion of subsection 130407 adoption of plans shall be amended to read as follows. Proposed changes to code 1304 Planning Commission page one, uh, excuse me, 380. 130407, adoption of plans. All plans, recommended ordinances and regulations pertaining to the land use plan, the community facilities plan, the master street plan, and other plans as are significant to the health, safety, and general wel welfare of the city of Eureka Springs shall be adopted through the following procedure. Section 2. All provisions of the ordinances of the City of Eureka Springs in conflict with the provisions of this ordinance are hereby repealed. And all other provisions of the ordinances of the City of Eureka Springs not in conflict with the provisions of this ordinance shall remain in full force and effect. Section 3. Severability. Should any sentence, paragraph, clause, phrase, or section of this ordinance be adjudged or held to be unconstitutionally illegal or invalid, the same shall not affect the validity of this ordinance as a whole or any part of provision thereof other than the part so decided to be invalid, illegal, or unconstitutional and shall not affect the validity of the Eureka Springs Municipal Code as a whole. I get a motion to uh, uh, <coughs> pass uh, Ordinance 2269 on its first reading. I'll make a motion to approve Ordinance Number 2269 on its first reading by title only. No, just for approval. Just yeah. for approval. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we've already read it. All right. Okay. Discussion? <laughs> All those in favor, sing five saying aye. 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 Any opinions? <clears throat> All right. Let me take care of that that one. Uh, and then get a motion to to uh, sign ordinance uh, number two, UB number two a number and read on his first reading. I make a motion that we give number two an ordinance number and read it on his first reading. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, saying probably saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. The ordinance number will be 2270, an ordinance amending Title 14 of the Eureka Springs Municipal Code regarding R1 Victorian Residential. Whereas the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs desires to amend, amend Title 14, uh, there's a typo, within the city and whereas the City Planning Commission after public hearing has recommended the following change. Now therefore be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs that Title 14 of the Municipal Code be amended as follows. Section 1. Subsection 1408.01 Zoning Districts Zoning District R1 Victorian Residential Restrictions in R1 Victorian Residential shall be amended as follows. Paragraph C1 and C4 shall be replaced by the following paragraphs. In one, <coughs> no request for a new conditional use permit shall be granted if an existing conditional use permitted property or legal non-conforming permitted property is within 200 feet from all parcel boundaries of a new application. 
This restriction is not intended to, nor shall it apply, to any existing permitted conditional use activities where a permit is requested for an existing activity due to a change in ownership. Ordinance 1879 passed August 20, 2001. Uh, let's see, C4, existing tourist lodgings may not expand the number of units originally permitted. That's or from Ordinance 1880, Section 2, passed in August, on August 20th, 2001, and Ordinance Number 1816. Uh, this is the old code. Section 14-6-3.2, <coughs> passed in, on November 2nd, 2000. Paragraph C2 shall be amended by adding tour home, house museum, in quotes, restricted hours for non-private events, Sunday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., Saturday, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., end quote, and changing daycare small to daycare small and large. A new paragraph C5 shall be added as follows. New bed and breakfast establishments may be allowed in residentially zoned districts as a conditional use. The owner of a bed and breakfast shall certify a time of application and upon request that they, the owner, or a resident manager shall occupy the premises and register the establishment as their primary domicile. Section 2. All provisions of this ordinance of the city of the ordinances of the city of Eureka Springs in conflict with the provisions of this ordinance are hereby repealed and all other provisions of the ordinances of the city of Eureka Springs not in conflict with the provisions of this ordinance shall remain a full force in effect. Section 3, severability. Should any sentence, paragraph, clause, phrase, or section of this ordinance be adjudged or held to be unconstitutional, illegal, or invalid, the same shall not affect the validity of this ordinance as a whole or any part of provision thereof other than the part so decided to be invalid, illegal, or unconstitutional and shall not affect the validity of the Eureka Springs Municipal Code as a whole. Get a motion to uh, pass Ordinance 2270 on its first reading. So moved. Second. In discussion? I have a question. Mr. Mitchell? Okay. Uh, yes. On uh, way down, a new paragraph C5 shall be added as follows. New bed and breakfast establishments may be allowed in residentially zoned districts as a conditional use. I know later we're considering a moratorium. I think this is appropriate just to make a statement about that. And I have been getting a tremendous amount of feedback asking why we do not just take bed and breakfast in R1 and treat them like uh, tourist lodging and just ban them totally. And that's just a comment. Mr. Thomas? I have a question for Tim. That paragraph C5. So if someone sells their property, uh, they have an existing CUP and they sell it, the new buyer would not have to certify that they uh, will it, will occupy it or have a resident manager. That would only apply to new CUPs and isn't that kind of discriminatory? Actually it applies to both because it allows upon a request so the Planning Commission can make a request at any time that it be certified. Okay, they can, but if, but if they don't request it, the, the renewal as I would call it, they would not have to certify that they have a manager or that they live on site. I think in order for the Planning Commission to act, it probably would ask, but it doesn't require it. Right. But it does give them the power to do that. Right. So if you require something of one and not of the other, is that really fair? Well, in this instance, we're treating bed and breakfasts that are in continual operation, even though they may change owners, as a continuing operation. And so we're not really treating them that much different just because they have a new owner. Mm -hmm. And so I think it would stand constitutional muster. I didn't choose those exact words, and that actually, from what I understand, may be something that the Planning Commission is looking at eliminating anyway, is bed and breakfast in R1. 
and that would probably remove that paragraph anyway. Okay. Mr. McClellan? Yeah, that, uh, I'm not sure I understood exactly what was said by either of you. Uh, is it, is what you're saying, what you're saying is that, that an existing bed and breakfast, if it changes ownership, that it's not grandfathered the way it currently exists is it would, yes or no? It would continue with the power as being grandfathered, but it would need a reissuance. Right. They're but reissued I understand anyway. that. I understand that. It's, it's going it, to, it, but as far as, as, as far as a manager, <coughs> property manager or property owner, is that, is, is that change too? I mean, I'm not sure I understand. You know, do the, the, the guidelines the, stay the, the same? This would increase the uh, potential for the Planning Commission to ask that it be certified that there is a property manager or that there is an owner on site at any time. And, and if there's not, they, they could deny the request. Well, it would more probably come up in instances where the, the Planning Commission thinks that a bed and breakfast is being operated illegally without one of the two. And they could ask for certification at any time. So, so you're, what you're saying is that an existing bed and breakfast, if they don't adhere to this rule, they can be shut out. They could potentially be brought before the board for removal from the list of approved bed and breakfasts that have okay. grandfathering. All right. That's one thing. And then another is exist, existing tourist lodgings may not expand the number of units originally permitted. What does that mean? My understanding of what the Planning Commission means by that language is that if they are in existence at the time this ordinance would be passed and they have four units, they cannot decide that they want to add a fifth unit. If I've got a structure that enables me to do so and I wanted to put it in a fifth unit and still had living quarters, I couldn't do it. That is correct by the wording of the way I understand what planning is asking here. That they will restrict them to the number there is at this point within each unit or within each facility, the number of units there now. I'm, 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 I'm not happy with either of these two points. Thanks. Yes, ma'am. Um, the reason that <coughs> planning came up with this was. A bed and breakfast to us is a home-based business with a residence in the home running the business. So we came up with this because there's probably four or five of them in town that do not have someone living there. They will rent out what is their living quarters to a renter that does not manage, does not do anything. So basically they've got tourist lodging plus a renter. The one with a tourist, existing tourist lodging may not expand is we do not allow tourist lodging in R1. And so we're just not allowing any more of it. So if they've got four units, they can keep four units. They just can't build another unit and add one. Okay. Further questions? That's, that's not what it says. It doesn't say that it, I can... You know, I, I, and, and I understand what you're saying about, you know, uh, you're talking about taking something and turning it into uh, without any management there at all. That's different. That is different than what you're saying in this, in this deal. That, that there has to be someone, you know, living there and taking care of the place. That it cannot be completely occupied as, as lodging. And, you know, if somebody is, 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 has a bed and breakfast, as an example, and has four units, and then has an owner's apartment, and has, and rents it out to somebody on a monthly basis just for the income, with no management inside, that's not very smart. You know, they're not going to last very long. You know, that's, that's what I see. So, I mean, I, I just, I just, it, it just, I'm, I'm really, I'm still stuck on the, the, 
like <coughs> like Mr. Szynski said, that that what we have in in place is really adequate. Okay, Mr. Mitchell. I, I'm yeah, I'm gonna parrot something from Mr. Jasinski in a way I think too. Th this one bothers me about the new bed and breakfast because again I'm going to go back to that statement. We really ought to consider if we're trying to limit bed and breakfast especially in R1 which tourist lodging has been eliminated it seems much more sense to just go ahead and add bed and breakfast to tourist lodging and they're not it's not allowed in R1 and then that cleans it up. But so I'm, I'm not going to be I'm probably not going to sign off on this particular ordinance because of that. We, if I might, I think what may be coming to the council from the Planning Commission is a recommendation to eliminate uh, new bed and breakfast in R1 in the R district. Uh, so these two ordinances may uh, okay. may need to be reworked anyway. So what I might suggest is that we defer both these next two ordinances which uh, have to do with R2 uh, and bed and breakfast. They're both similar. One's in R1 and one's in R2. Uh, because they, if they're coming back and saying, let's just do away with B&Bs totally. No more new B&Bs in our district. I'm, I'm fine if you want to defer, but I, but I think that's ridiculous. Well, I'm just saying that's, I think that's what the Planning Commission may be coming from what I'm hearing. Yeah, I'm uh, to defer. Second. Okay, on the next two, on this one yeah. and the next one? All right. Yeah. Okay. So do we change the number to lose the number and keep the number? We'd keep the number. Okay. At this point. Isn't that correct? Yeah. All right. Um, how about, uh, let's get a, a sign of, uh, oh, we need to vote. Okay, all those in favor of uh, deferring this till next Council meeting seems five is saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so moved. I guess this didn't we have a um, did we have a motion to assign it a number and re read it that we need? We did, but a motion to defer it takes precedence okay. over that. Just to be clear, thank you. Uh, so our next one is. Uh, you hmm? did read it. We already read, read it. it. Yeah. Yes, but we still deferred it. Now, then, the, so the next one that we're. We're uh, postponing is is the ordinance amending Title 14 uh, regarding R2 contemporary residential. Is that correct? No. No. What was the other one that we deferred? Uh, number two and three, which is basically R1 and R2. Title 14 uh, regarding R2 contemporary residential. So that was we did defer that. That yes, okay. those two. They both have to deal with a bed and breakfast. Yeah. Okay. Okay, this next item, um, get a motion to uh, assign this uh, ordinance number, well, this UB number two, Princess four, a number, and read it for its first reading. So moved. Get second. Second. All right, any discussion? Yeah. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. The ordinance number will be 2271. An ordinance amending Title 14 of the Eureka Springs Municipal Code regarding C1, C2, and C3. Whereas the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs desires to amend Title 14 within the city, and whereas the City Planning Commission, after public hearing, has recommended the following change. Now therefore, be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs that Title 14 of the Municipal Code be amended as follows. Section 1, subsection 140801, zoning district C1, Victorian Commercial. Add to permitted uses, financial institution, hostel, library, museum, tour home, slash house museum. Section 2, subsection 140801, zoning district C2, contemporary <coughs> commercial. Add to permitted uses, conference and or convention venue, financial institution, hostel, medical services, mini warehouse, storage, museum, RV park, tour home and or house museum. Section 3, subsection 140801, zoning district C3, quiet use commercial. Add to permitted uses, hostel, 
tour home and or house museum. Section 4, subsection 1408.01, zoning district C3, quiet use commercial, add to conditional uses, library, museum. Section 5, all provisions of the ordinances of the city of Eureka Springs in conflict with the provisions of this ordinance are hereby repealed and all other provisions of the ordinances of the city of Eureka Springs not in conflict with the provisions of this ordinance shall remain in full force and effect. Section 6, severability. Should any sentence, paragraph, clause, phrase, or section of this ordinance be adjudged or held to be unconstitutional, illegal, or invalid, the same shall not affect the validity of this ordinance as a whole or any part or provision thereof other than the part so decided to be invalid, illegal, or unconstitutional and shall not affect the validity of the Eureka Springs Municipal Code as a whole. All right, get a motion to approve uh, 2271 on its first reading. So moved. Second. Discussion? All those in favor, seeing five are saying aye. Uh -huh. aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. All right, that brings us to our last uh, ordinance, uh, number unfinished business number two, Princess Five, uh, regarding uh, planned unit development. Get a motion to uh, sign this in number and read it for first reading. So moved. Second. Yes, ma'am. Okay, we've got to make a choice on here. Do we have to make a choice before we read it or after? Hmm? After you probably should read uh, both choices so they're stated. Uh, the first choice, as my understanding, is what Planning Commission first recommended. The second choice is what uh, your fellow council person, uh, Miss Kendrick, proposed as a change to it. And if you do accept hers as opposed to the other, I would recommend that you uh, change the second whereas clause to indicate that. Okay, thank you. Hmm. I have a question. What's the process for a, a city council person adding their ideas to a proposed ordinance or change by planning? Typically, you would do it here at the table, but for some reason, it was given to me as part of the documents that were given to me directly from planning, and so I didn't feel comfortable removing it since it was in what I received directly from from what I understood that they had submitted. May I add to that? Yes. When this the proposals were heard in a public hearing it was at that time that Ms. Kendrick added her uh, proposed change and so it actually was part of that public hearing but that was about 10 months ago, so. All right, so, go ahead. I just don't understand the process because I don't understand how at a public hearing I could raise my hand and say, well, I want to add this to what planning has proposed. That doesn't make sense to me. She could have made that suggestion, then planning could have gone back and, and voted on it at their meeting, but just to be able to put things into a, a document doesn't... This doesn't sound right to me. Well, if you'd like to inquire of planning, you may get a better answer than this, but what I understood from my inquiry was that planning left two alternatives, what they had originally said and what they believed Ms. Kendrick to say. And so they did not make a choice of the two particular passages, which was the approved passage from theirs, but sent both on for council's consideration. Further comments? So we got a motion to assign this a number and, and read on its first reading. No further comments. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. The ordinance number will be 2272, an ordinance amending Title 14 of the Eureka Springs Municipal Code regarding planned unit developments. Whereas the city Council of the City of Eureka Springs desires to amend Title 14 within the city and whereas the City Planning Commission, after public hearing, has recommended the following change. 
Now therefore be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs that Title 14 of the Municipal Code be amended as follows. Section 1, subsection 140803, Use Conditions and Exceptions. Paragraph E, Planned Unit Development, shall have the following language added. <coughs> Number 5, the applicant must pay a non-refundable processing fee of $100. Number 6, public hearing. The Planning Commission shall schedule a public hearing on the application the applicant shall follow the following procedures for giving notice for this public hearing. A, there shall be a public notice of the hearing published at least once in a newspaper of general circulation in the city at least 10 days before the hearing, which notice sets forth the time and place of such hearing and the address of the proposed planned unit development. The responsibility and cost of the public notice shall be borne by the party making the proposal. B. The applicant shall notify all adjacent property owners within 200 feet of the property lines in every direction by certified mail, return receipt requested, at least 10 days prior to the public hearing. C. All return receipts and a copy of the letter with the affidavit of publication from the publisher shall be furnished to the Planning Commission before the public hearing. D. The applicant shall post at least one or more conspicuous signs on the property at least 10 days prior to said hearing. Signs shall be provided by the city and shall note the time and date of the public hearing. And paragraph P shall be replaced with the following language. <coughs> the first choice. P, 200 foot rule. No request for a conditional use permit shall be... For a new conditional. You skipped the word new. Thank you. For a new conditional use permit shall be granted if an existing conditional use permit property or legal non-conforming permitted property is within 200 feet from all, all parcel boundaries of a new application. This restriction is not intended to, nor shall it apply, to any existing permitted conditional use activities where a permit is requested for an existing activity due to a change in ownership. Existing tourist lodgings may not expand the number of units originally permitted. Uh, ordinance number 1879 passed August 20th, 2001 or, Ms. Kendrick's suggestion, 200 foot rule. No request for a conditional use permit shall be granted if a property that is the subject of an existing conditional use permit or a legal non-conforming use is within 200 feet of the property, which is the subject of the request for a conditional use permit. Section 2. All provisions of the ordinances of the City of Eureka Springs in conflict with the provisions of this ordinance are hereby repealed and all other provisions of the ordinance of ordinances of the City of Eureka Springs not in conflict with the provisions of this ordinance shall remain in full force and effect. Section 3, severability. Should any sentence, paragraph, clause, phrase, or section of this ordinance be adjudged or held to be unconstitutional, illegal, or invalid, the same shall not affect the validity of this ordinance as a whole or any part or provision thereof other than the parts so decided to be invalid, illegal, or unconstitutional and shall not affect the validity of the Eureka Springs Municipal Code as a whole. Ms. Snyder. Um, it's been a while. I don't remember, so I'm going to ask Melissa. Okay, I'm here. The applicant has a non-refundable, non-refundable $100 fee. That's the part that's kind of new, right? Yes. Okay. So my question is, after they've paid that non-refundable $100, mm -hmm. then they have to pay all this publishing and everything else in the newspaper? I don't remember that part. Is that new? May I answer? Well, I'm asking Mr. Mayor, can, can we have a motion to approve and then discuss, instead of discussing just randomly here? We Okay. Um, can you make a motion? 
We got a motion to. We really need to make a decision. Uh, we got. A, what's our motion? Did we vote on our last motion? We just had. We just read it. The motion was made to read, okay. and it was read. Now we need. If we're going to move forward, we need a motion. Motion to, to approve. To approve. Okay. Get a motion to but approve. Don't, to approve. But don't we have to accept one or two first? No. Uh, I'm not sure, Mr. Weaver. No, that would be part of your discussion. Oh, okay. okay. Get a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Okay. Now we're in discussion. Okay, so I asked you a question. Okay. Mickey, when, when <laughs> you're applying for like a, a CUP for a bed and breakfast or another um, business, we had the $100 fee in there. Okay. So that's, it's just they're adding plan unit development to right. it. But, but my point was, that's non-refundable, and then they also have to go to all the expense that's of publishing the, in the papers. That's what all the other ones have to do, too. See, well, my question is, is this new? I don't remember yes. them. Yes. I oh. thought planning had to do the newspaper stuff. No. No, the applicant does. That's what changed. Okay. No, I'm talking yeah. about what, what was the way it was. There was nothing. Uh, okay. There was nothing. Oh, okay. All right, Mr. McClellan. That's why I didn't remember it. Now, now you just said something there that, that I'm, I'm not sure I, I heard you correctly, but you, so you consider a bed and breakfast, a planned unit development? No, no, no. On, on all our applications, Mr. McClellan, they all charge $100. They all have to do this. I have, just, a I have no problem. With yeah, that. they just That's added the plan unit development now has to do that too. I, I don't have any problem with that. My, all right, but the question I have, because it's kind of confusing because it's put together, that uh, P is not a part of E. It, P is, does not refer to, the 200 foot rule doesn't apply to a plan unit development. Um, like it's, it, 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 or, or I guess it no, does up here, at least for notification, but, but it doesn't as far as a restriction. That's what they put in, and, and that's what we have to decide if we want it or don't want it. I don't understand. Can you pass a little thing back? That there? doesn't make sense to me either. But Did that have that in there? Okay, yeah. okay explain mm -hmm. why they Mr. Weaver, do you have any... The way it's written in the document, it is a portion of the same subsection, and therefore it would apply. You know, a planned unit development is 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 a subdivision or a, a commercial property that is being subdivided, like Mr. Bird did up there, where Forest Hill Restaurant is. Mm -hmm. Uh, the motel up there, that was a planned you know, development. So, I, you know, I, okay. I don't understand the purpose. I think maybe we were talking in residential because, yes, you're correct. Some planned unit developments are in commercial areas. I think this was in residential. I don't know. What, what would be a planned unit development in a residential area? Uh, like condominiums? Mr. Mary's up on Lookout. Um, I believe. So, so I mean, I understand that you would notice, notify the people in within 200 feet, but, but why would it be? Why would if if I had a parcel of land big enough to subdivide, mm -hmm. and was going to put in streets and all? I mm -hmm. mean, I, I understand why I have to do a plan unit you know, development and get that approved. Right. But why why would it be miss all residential lots right. anyway? I don't. I guess I don't, I don't get it. I don't really disagree I, with you because it's really not a CUP. Okay, I think they're two separate. I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, we can go ahead and, and pick one of these, but I think what we've got uh, once on page 416, and then the P is on page 421. I've got a feeling they're two separate. Well, that's. I mean, that's. I just. It's just uh, confusing know. reading them together on yeah. this. On I this understand. document, so I want to make sure that it's uh, that it's not that it's not applied. Should we defer this one too? I think they're on the same page in fourteen point eight eight oh three. They're two separate. I can't. I don't have that. Uh, well, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure it does. I'm not, I'm not. I'm not arguing that. But it. But I just want to make sure that it's understood that this. 
does not tie into this. Look, look, check the code and see if we're see if that where we are, Terry. Or I need to hear somebody, the city attorney. Let's see. Or the city attorney. Page four. For what? That's, I lost it again. Uh, Can we defer this along with the others? And uh, page 416 is the planned unit development. And page 421 mm -hmm. is the mm -hmm. 200 foot. Okay. So they're not, they're not, which they're not together. One is for the season. I, I, I think they're two separate. Okay. Okay. Right. Issues. 416. 416 is the planned unit development. Not what I have here. 14.08. Oh, 14.08. 03 03 140803 oh, 203 oh, uh, land unit e. development is on 14 414 planning doesn't always get the code updates the new pages when you if get we're having trouble with this we may want to just defer this to the next meeting. That, and that's... You want to keep going see if there's a P. I make a motion uh, that we defer this until it gets straightened out. Yeah, it's not. It's I'll not. second it. <laughs> All right. We got a motion to defer. And second. a second. No. Yeah. All right. Got a second. Okay, all those in favor of deferring this into our next meeting, sync five saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so moved. It's yours. Where did this yes. come from? The last Thank you. Can you make a copy of that for me? I've got a copy of it. Uh, yes. Can I ask Sometime. a question on that? Yes. Um, why is P even included on the same sheet as Thank you. E? We won't even worry about that at this point. Well, I'm just saying if they're going to be Well, let's worry about that next week. Because I don't know. Okay. You know. All right. Uh, let's see. That brings us to uh, <laughs> item three. Resolution for a moratorium on the B&B &B condition reuse permits. Get a motion, motion to, to discuss. discuss. Second. 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 Uh, I, this was brought by the Planning Commission, and for obviously for good reasons, we're having some issues with our ordinances and stuff. So they are recommending and wanting a um, a six month minimum or a six month uh, moratorium, or until these ordinances are passed. So, yes, ma'am. Isn't this like the second one in a row? I don't know about that. Somebody want to make a motion? To I want to make a motion. Get a motion no, to discuss. Sorry, motion to discuss. And we got a second. Yes. Okay. We already had that, uh, Mr. McClung. Evidently, I'm, I'm getting confused myself. <laughs> so, did somebody want to make a um, a motion to assign this a number, or or you want to further discuss it? All right. Okay, Ms. you you said for six months or until the ordinances get passed. And when the ordinances <coughs> get passed, that's true. That will take care of those items, one I way or the other. I don't see that on here. Am I looking at it? The six months or may I answer that? Yes. The la at the last meeting, the planning was discuss discussing it. The chair suggested until. The ordinance is passed. When the motion was made by one of the commissioners, she specifically said a six-month moratorium, and that is what they voted on. 
was okay. a six month moratorium. So it was actually talked two ways and they probably didn't realize it. I would feel a whole lot better if we had six months or um, because I know this has been going on for a while. You know, we, we could get everything done in the next month and then we'd have five months of, mm-hmm. of nothing. Well, or it just depends on what we do, you know. Well, but that's, anyway. that's the thing. If we have the option, if we have six months or... Or we can, we can do it however the council wants. Well, I make a... Mr. McClung? I, uh, I really don't see any need for it, actually. Well, uh, if we get done in a month. I don't, I, don't, I don't see any need for the resolution. I, oh. I mean, the Planning Commission has the mechanism to either give or not to give out a conditional use permit for, for uh, a bed and breakfast. So, you know, if, if they follow their guidelines correctly, then, I, you know, I don't see the problem that it currently exists. Okay. Any further discussion? Ms. Green. Um, I, I know planning has been wrestling with this for a long time. And overwhelmingly, <clears throat> the public has asked that we do away with bed and breakfast, especially in R1. I was a huge proponent of them. I, I supported them. But overwhelmingly, I have been asked by just about everyone, please, no more bed and breakfasts in the residential area. And I, they have this moratorium, I think, is a way to ask that and give us time to consider that or give them time to consider it. In, in a practical sense, with the 200-foot requirement, Aren't they pretty much dead anyway if the Planning Commission follows the guidelines? Um, they, they still have the issue of... Parking and, and everything. Right, but they, they still have the issue. They can get a variance. The, the, the new law makes it where it, it, it's in a radius, and, and it will make it considerably hard to get any kind of CUP without a variance. So I don't disagree with you there, but I, it just... Public opinion, Terry, I've had it over and over. People have asked me and asked me to please do away with them. I, I'm just bringing uh, it to Quite the frankly, table. I don't hear a lot about it, but that's just me. I don't, I don't, the only time I ever hear anything is when I go to planning commission meeting or when it's brought up here. Mr. Thomas? Could I ask a question, Melissa? Who, who, who do they go to for a variance? I'm sorry. Planning uh, commission. The planning commission. This, that's kind of cyclical then to say that planning would deny them because they don't meet the requirements so then they would ask planning for a variance. Well, okay. I, I don't understand why planning the would new, give them a if, variance. If we pass the new law <coughs> and I live on Pine Street and want to start a B&B <clears throat> and there's one 200 feet away on Elk Street I cannot apply anymore. That, that's the new law. There, there's no applying inside of that radius on any kind of CUP. If it was a CUP for... You could still go for a variance. Right. So then I just get a variance and ask, and, and I can be heard. Which is what we have right now. Right. So I think planning, our, our idea was to make it hard from public comments Two, up two years ago I started, they asked us to eliminate B&Bs. So we came up with something that made it harder so that it would be more restrictive. And that doesn't seem to be working either. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I, I'd like to go back to, the, to that Elk Street mm-hmm. property that was mentioned earlier. You know, yes. I, that was all handled poorly. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I, you know, yes, you know, I agree. I, and I'm not trying to dress anyone down or anything but it just that just went badly and showed yes. badly for all of us and yes and and I think it's because the the job was not done correctly and I think we lost we lost a good commissioner over that deal and y- yes we did and and so you know I think it's the responsibility of the planning commission and to to do what their their job is and if it fits the guidelines it fits if it doesn't then it's it's plain. Then they don't get it. You know that's it's that simple as it as it currently exists. Well, 
that's why it's kind of just being discussed at our table. We're going to decide yay or nay. You know, if we decide that we're fine with taking them out, then we send it back to planning to write it up. If we don't, we don't send them anything. Okay. At this point, the Planning Commission is asking for the resolution <coughs> to put a moratorium on conditional use permits for bed and breakfast. So that's, that's where we are. Uh, I understand what Mr. McClung saying, but it's up to the council. Uh, if you want to go with the uh, Planning Commission's recommendation or, or not. Mr. Mitchell. Basically, that's true. And at some point, we can sit here and philosophically run back and forth. But I think at this point, planning has tried very hard for a long time to, to listen to the public, to respond, and to come up with things. And we're still sitting here deferring some of these ordinances and various other things that are going on. And all the while, they still will possibly be getting requests for CUPs for one unit bed and breakfast <coughs> to deal with. So the bottom line for me with the moratorium is that I think it just supports planning and I believe they deserve our support and let them have the moratorium as we wrestle with the ordinances. Are you, are you wanting to make a, a motion to sign this a number? Yes, I'll make a motion to sign this a number and read uh, for passage or whatever. I'll second that. Okay, discussion? Mr. Thomas? I just would like to say I. I don't like framing questions in terms of if you don't agree with what they want, you don't support them. I, I don't think that's necessarily true and I don't think we should be framing it like that. That I, I, I can support the Planning Commission 100% and still say I'd, I'm not for a moratorium. Why does it have to be if I vote against this, I'm voting against Planning Commission? I don't like that. For the discussion, Ms. Snyder. I'm so confused. <laughs> I mean, totally confused. Either we're going to do CUPs and bed and breakfast or we're not. Why do we want or need a resolution to make that decision, to make it easier to make that decision? I don't get it. What am I missing here? This, I mean, this is a stop line? group because it's going to take at least six weeks, eight weeks to get anything done. And in that meantime, they can always apply somebody because I know there are new rules coming up. There may be rules uh, uh, prohibiting B&Bs and R1 and R2 that the right. council will take up. So this is going to be established a resolution and a moratorium on that until those are decisions are made by the council. Okay, then I have a question for the attorney. Does planning have the legal right, if someone applies, if we do not pass a moratorium, does planning have the legal right to say, we are working on those, please come back in two months or whatever? Do they have that right, Tim? No, there's restrictions on their time frame to act if the application meets the other requirements of the code. I think what Mr. McClung has been saying is that there are a lot of restrictions in there and I think some of the others have been echoing it too, that uh, most of the city or most of the area that there will be an application from, you couldn't get it within that without a variance anyway because there's, there's too many other restrictions already in place in most places. There are going to be some corners that you could stick one in if this moratorium doesn't pass potentially. Okay, so they wouldn't be able to say we're in the process of getting things passed and so there's a slight delay. They can't That's what the moratorium is for. what okay. the moratorium is for. I'd still like to have the moratorium in six months or. Have any further discussion? No. All right. Uh, we've got a motion to assign this a number and pass for us. Uh, for reading. Uh, we do a roll call? Read it, you will have to read it for passage. It will be a full oh, roll call. Okay, thank you. Yes. All right. Go ahead and roll call. Please, ma'am. 
Mr. Thomas? I support parks, but I don't support this You're resolution. Planning Commission. <laughs> I support Planning Commission. Parks has been framed in the same way, you know, if you don't with right. everything they do. Is that a no? No. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. McClung? No. Ms. Green? Yes. Ms. Schneider? God. Uh, I can see the exact equal sides. <laughs> Shoot. Um, no. Two, three, motion fails. Okay. Could I abstain? Same difference. Yeah, yeah that's what I figured. All right. Um, our next item of business, and I'm sorry, <laughs> we have a people here uh, from the Community Center Foundation. So if I can get a motion to discuss uh, so all the data. Second. All right. So it takes so long. I'm not sure who would like to make the presentation here. Thanks. Um, because you have asked about it for many meetings, we are here tonight to give the community an update on the community center. You have asked for a financial report. Uh, I want to make it clear that we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We receive no city funds, no tax dollars, and have no obligation or accountability to the city. The request from the city for us to present our financials is entirely unprecedented, as you know, and it's far outside your purview as council. We are here solely as a courtesy to the community to allay any concerns that you may have raised in their minds. Over 400 local residents and businesses believe in this project so much that they have contributed hundreds of thousands of dollars to help make it happen. Those donors are the ones we are accountable to, and they receive an annual financial update through our newsletter. Additionally, we require an annual audit of our organization, which Rusty Wendell is here to address tonight. What I really want to talk about is the value of cooperative effort in creating what's best for our town. We are so used to oper organizations operating independently and separately that somehow when we make an effort to find common ground and work together, it fosters suspicion and lack of trust. We can do better than this, and we have to. We're a small town. We need to work together. Opportunities for cooperation should be embraced and celebrated. They should not become cause for suspicion and alarm. We are all well aware of the laws and the bylaws we must follow. No one is trying to ignore or circumvent those. We also know that when we can work together, we're all stronger for it. The Community Center Board has stated from the beginning that our vision is based on collaboration. We already have existing ongoing partnerships with a number of organizations and we continue, we intend to continue um, and expand that model of partnering as we move forward. Um, before turning the mic over to Rusty, I want to officially announce that the Community Center is open. We had an amazing turnout at the ribbon cutting on the 9th. Thank you to the mayor for being there and participating, to Mickey for participating. Um, the community center is open Monday through Thursday from 4 to 8, from, on Saturdays from 9 to 3. I hope you will come by and take a tour. Even better if you would come by and join and become a member. Uh, we're also partnering with a number of various um, local fitness instructors. We've got a great lineup of classes that are just getting started. You can check everything out online and council has received um, a schedule in your package as well. Mayor and council. Uh, I've done the uh, review for the Lucas Springs Community Center Foundation um, for the last uh, couple of years. Uh, the most recent report is uh, December 31st, 2017. Uh, basically, the beginning cash balance was $123,740.52. Over the course of the uh, year 2017, they took in $160,930.45. Uh, they spent $167,752.09 uh, 
and they ended the year with a uh, balance of 116,918.88. In the course of my review, uh, basically what I do is make sure that uh, everything is done according to generally accepted accounting principles, uh, everything is documented properly, they follow their bylaws on how they spend money, uh, there's no uh, illegal uh, spending of money uh, according to what they do. Uh, there has not been, uh, there's no, none of the uh, council or the board members uh, are paid for what they do. Um, we just basically go through and, and verify uh, with the checks and the receipts that they've done uh, what they're supposed to and that nobody's absconded with funds and they haven't, they've, they've uh, done everything they were supposed to do. Uh, they're in compliance with their filings with the state uh, as a 501c3 and with uh, the Internal Revenue Service. Um, and all that is uh, legal and up to snuff. I don't know if that's an accounting term, but that's one I'll use. Uh, so they've done uh, everything according to the laws that they're supposed to. Mr. Mitchell? Yes, I have some questions of, of Russ, Russ, if you don't mind. Uh, the first I'd like to, to go back and answer to what Diane Murphy said and bring up the motion that was made on January the 8th of 2018 for clarity. <coughs> Suspend all engagement with the Eureka Springs Community Center Foundation until such time as the City of Eureka Springs elected officials in conjunction with legal counsel has the opportunity to conduct in-depth due diligence on the Eureka Springs Community Center's Foundation's Articles of Incorporation, lease with the school district, and financial records of all income sources and detailed expenses. And that's obviously the part that you're here about with the audit. Yes, and I have some questions in, in regards to what's going on there. Uh, in looking at the Internal Revenue Service website, I see that on August 31st, 2015, you applied for uh, application and you became a public charity status at that time. And the uh, IRS has operational requirements for record keeping and all that. <coughs> and it very clearly looks like by this audit you have achieved that. And as a CPA, you've audited the 2015, 2016, and 2017? Yes, sir. Okay. Or reviewed. Some of these are reviews instead of audits, but it's the same. The same thing. And, and you do that. Yes, okay. Yes, sir. And when you're, when you're auditing, do you also fill out the IRS forms? Correct. So, and you've been filling out the 990 Ns, the postcard? Uh, 15 and 16 was a 990N, 2017 yeah. will actually be a 990EZ EZ. in actual okay. form because they have enough income coming in. And that's supposed to go in by what, May the 15th? We did an extension on it so I'd have plenty of time to do it so it's not due till uh, to, uh, November 15th of 2018. Okay. Yeah. And an extension has been filed. Okay. So and when the you 2018 filing to the state while we're talking about this stuff, they have a state requires the nonprofits to register with them that they're still in operation basically that has been done for the 2018 year. Okay. So when you're filling out the 990 series forms and you're doing the 990N based on the IRS, <coughs> gross receipts normally are supposed to be less than or equal to 50,000. Correct. <coughs> in, uh, and so in 2015 you did the 990N and they have that on, on file. You can take a look at that. And in 2016, you also did the 990N form. In a review of all of the articles in the Elk City uh, Lovely County Citizen, uh, Ms. Murphy is quoted as saying that they collected over $200,000 that year. So I'm wondering since the 990, and this is just a question, sure. since the 990N says it has to be 50000 or less, but yet it stated that there was over 200000 in collections, why wasn't an easy form filed for 2016? Normally it's based off of what their normal collections were, and one year doesn't usually throw it into, that's not their normal collections. This year with a third year being over those years, that's why I did it that way. To do a nine, to, to do a 990 easy to show those details. Okay, but you always have the option to do an easy form anytime. Even Correct. We could do it at any point. Yes, we could do that at any point. 
You could do an input. Yes, we could. We could have done it, and I could have done it in 16 with a 990 easy. Okay. So when you do the 990, then you also don't do the schedule of contributors that contributed over 5,000. On the 990 easy, yes. You would. Yes, on the 990 easy, I would, and on the 990 okay. uh, in, you don't. The the reform this year, if there are contributors over 5,000, that will be there will be a schedule B. Okay, so you're comfortable then the 990 in, even though the collections were over 200,000, was appropriate? Yes, for that year. For this year, no. But, but not for this year? For this year, it'll be a 990 easy. Okay, and that has, when you have your extension on that? Yes. Which obviously is when And it will be filed before the extension date. Okay. And that will be available for public uh, inspection if anybody okay. wants to see that. You know, the reason this motion started was we were looking at, at the time of, of looking at a meeting room and there was looking at some coordination on things that the city was going to do. And it was very clearly brought up about the city's involvement with the 501c3 and what is and isn't acceptable and how you do that and what business you can or can't do. And, and so there was some questions about that. And so this motion was made off of the basis of the separation of the city and that. And I understand that some very nice people got together, came up with a wonderful idea, and the community center as an entity is a wonderful idea. But they went out with a business plan, they organized themselves, they went to the IRS, they set themselves up, they went to the school, they got a lease, 400, what, 400,000, so they took on a lot of debt, plus they took a lot of building expenses and various other things going on. And then on the income side, they have to apply for grants and get donations, and that, that's a heavy load of debt carrying on. So the issue about the motion at that time, which by the way passed by a majority of council at that moment based on that. Only because I wasn't here. <coughs> Please. Well, One at a time. And it was clearly to make a distinction that we understand the 501c3 and their obligation and the debt they took on. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And, and we hope it's a success. But we also wanted to be sure, I, I believe, at least when I made the motion, that we were separating the city businesses, the taxpayers' money, city's resources, employees, and everything else that goes along with that from a 501c3, which is private. If you look back, <coughs> when you look at parks, before the uh, grant was being shifted from Dairy Hollow uh, in, in an attempt over to, to the community center for the exercise trail, Justin had applied for two grants through the parks. And both of those were denied on the basis that, that parks shouldn't be applying for grants and then taking the money and putting them on a 501c3 or a private organization that was inappropriate. So when you look at that and you think about what we were looking at at the time, it was very clearly to make a distinction between what the city's doing, the city's resources and the tax money that the city brings in, and that it's not benefiting one foundation because there's a lot of foundations and, and tax exempt organizations in this community. There's Good Shepherd, there's Flint Street, there's Downtown Network, there's, there's tons of them. And I'm sure they would all love to have some tax money or some money or resources bundled into them. So it was just a distinction. It was never a negative against, oh well, council or David Mitchell or whoever is against the community center. No. It's not against the community center. It's the distinction of keeping the separation of city and 501c3 because there's a lot of them out there and, and a lot of foundations that also deserve support. So it's nice to see that you have uh, brought the audit. I thank you for answering my questions about the uh, IRS forms and what's going on. And that's it. I I want to address the comment about the sidewalk grant. The sidewalk grant was always a parks grant. It was really through the city whether it was going to which section of sidewalk it was going to be. And the grant only provides for 
that project to be built on public property. It does not allow it to be built on private property. We had a conversation at the council table and with the mayor that there would have had to have been an easement that was created to dedicate that property to the city. We had a conversation with the council and with the school district about creating a surety bond to protect that easement in the event of some sort of default down the road. There was never an intention or a communication about that going on private property. Mr. McClung? I just, uh, I want to concur with what she said. When we met with Parks on it, the first time uh, it was, when that, at the close of that discussion, it was understood that nothing would be done without the property being uh, in the hands of the city. Right. It would be for the city or it wouldn't be done. That's right. And then we went through it again a second time mm -hmm. with the exact same discussion. Yep. And, and, and Park said it again the exact same way that nothing would be done until unless it was on city property. Correct. That's, that was it. Okay. Mr. Mitchell. Justin applied for two grants through the state of Arkansas through Parks and Tourism to try and do something with trails on the, the property and was denied both times. Then very distinctly denied two times for grants he applied. Then the Dairy Hollow grant, which had came to the city council. Mm -hmm. The whole project was brought here. Wonderful idea. It was all explained. Everything was fine. Then all of a sudden, and I, I can pull the paper, I have the article here where Bill Featherston said all of a sudden it was overkill, overdone, it was too big, and they were going to shift the grant to the community center, which was fine, except that's when it came uh, up and council found out that the resolution we had signed off on for Dairy Hollow was in fact being moved and nobody at council was even yeah. aware of it. And I was actually at the first council meeting about that. Well, I was sitting and, here too. Thank and you. That, that, was, that was where we went through the process of saying that they did want to reallocate it to create the perimeter trail up there, but the land that the trail sat on right. would become city property. Right. It wasn't going to be community center property because the grant can't be used right. on private property. And did somebody here not ask this, it was not the school district asked to give us an easement so we could run the, the Yeah, sidewalk? and then we, and we, we also, we didn't follow through with it. Cool. But, but absolutely that was the intention so could to you do have, that. Could you have followed through and then we would have had a sidewalk? Yes. So why didn't you? Because you all put a stop to it. No, we <laughs> said that we all right, wait, wait now. We'll get, let's, let's, let's don't get into a debate here. We a, we asked these people to come up to give no, us some financial. Nice, but I, I want and correct information. Well, the correct information is what been said here. We needed to have an easement from the school. Correct. Now, what happened was we got we stopped and we didn't proceed with that. And I think you know right now that's that's in the past. I mean, you know, Again, what we're trying to deal with right now, now is, so is right, where we're going in the future. No, it's point. not on the table, but we do want correct information when we're discussing stuff. Well, and, and to me, Mr. Mitchell, I'm sorry, but, you know, my recollection is what we needed was was a, you know, an easement from the school. Everybody knew that, mm -hmm. and that's what and we did. That's what I and, knew, too. And for some, I don't know why we didn't proceed with it, except the council said, we don't want to deal with, this, with right. the foundation anymore. That's right. And the foundation stopped. That's right. And so... But that's, again, it's in the past. Let's proceed on and be in a positive method of where we can go from here. Okay. Are we done? Anybody else have questions? Okay. Thank you very much for coming. You're appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Bye, guys. All right. This is not public part, but I appreciate <laughs> the work you do. I mean, I don't always agree with you, but I appreciate all the work. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Rusty. Appreciate you, too. Uh, all right, our next uh, item is to uh, get a motion to discuss uh, Ordinance 2268 parking on Washington Street. So moved. Second. All right, I think we're on our second reading. Mm hmm. Get a motion to. Uh, so moved. Okay. <coughs> the whole thing. Okay. Please. I move that we read Ordinance 2268 by title only. Suspend the rules and read Suspend Ordinance. Suspend the rules for its second reading, title only. Second. Okay. Any discussion? 
All right. Ms. Green, you were the second? Yes. Mr. McClung? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Schneider? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. 5 0. <coughs> ordinance number 2268, an ordinance to amend ordinance 1845, restricting parking on a portion of Washington Street. They get a motion to uh, pass ordinance 2268 on second reading. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Yes. Yes, sir. Um, I was absent at the meeting for the first reading, and I have spoken with the fire chief, and he assures me that everyone is in agreement uh, on this. All the parties that are physically uh, adjacent to this and located up there and all on the same page so it sounds like it was a uh, a mutual resolution and I'm glad to hear that otherwise I wouldn't be for it but I'm good to go all right thank you I think I can just vote vote voice vote yes sir all right any further discussion hearing none all those in favor of uh, ordinance 2268 on second reading signify by saying aye aye, aye. any opposed all right so moved Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I'd like to uh, make a motion to suspend the rules and read ordinance okay. number 2268 on a third reading by title only. Second. Discussion? We don't have an emergency clause. Mr. Thomas? I'd just okay. like to know what the reason is for the emergency, or not emergency, but for. I didn't say anything about an emergency. I, I said I just made a mistake. Uh, not the reason for the emergency, but for reading it for the third time tonight instead of waiting two weeks. Why not? Why? Well, you could say that about every ordinance that we've Sure passed. could, but I'm saying about this one right now. Why not? <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> That's your reason. Thank you. I understand. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Ms. Snyder? Since we don't have an emergency clause, wouldn't something have to be done at the next meeting anyway? It has nothing to do with emergency clause. Yep. Okay. Any further discussion? Oh, that's just for approval time. Okay. 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 We had a motion and a second to read this uh, ordinance 2268 on uh, to suspend to suspend the rules and read by title only. All those in favor? What? Oh, we've got the voice. Roll call. Ms. Green. Yes. Ms. Schneider. Yeah. Mr. McClung. Yes. Mr. Mitchell. Yes. Mr. Thomas. No. Four one. Mr. Mayor. Wait, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Ordinance number 2268, <laughs> in order to amend ordinance 1845, restricting parking on a portion of Washington Street. Okay, now Mr. McClung. Thank you, Ms. Clark. <laughs> uh, I'd like to make a motion that we approve ordinance number 2268 on this third and final reading. Second. Discussion? Okay, roll call. Yes. Ms. Schneider? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. McClung? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Five zero. Okay. Um, bring us to our next item is uh, uh, projected schedule of water and sewer repairs. Uh, Mr. Dwayne Allen. So uh, this was by Mr. McClung, Mr. Mitchell. Um, motion to discuss. Good second. second. All right. Mr. Allen, you gave us a, a letter that I'm sure the council probably hadn't had an opportunity to read since it was just this afternoon. Do you want to kind of go over? Uh, I think Mr. McClung wanted to know what kind of plans you got. Oh, uh, yes. And it's, and it's quite so important because of the I&I, &I, the funds, the infrastructure improvements that, that's came in. So we've got an opportunity with some funding. Uh, so we're, we're setting at about a hundred thousand now that's in there uh, on our end of course we that wouldn't include it in the 18 budget so now we're looking at what you know in this mid-year budget how we proceed and uh, <clears throat> how that breaks down so we're, we're, we're trying to put those numbers together of how much is going to be paid from 
you know, to the uh, for the bonds, how much we're going to have, what we can do this year, and proceeding. And of course, the uh, there was a rate increase also that we we've, we've got to we've got to make sure that we keep that for the department. So we're looking, you know, two phases to build the department back to keep the improvements that we do to sustain those. We're going to have to look at, at the department itself and we'll have to discuss with the mayor of, of we're talking personnel, training, pay, you know, in the last, it's still so far in the BSNA that hadn't been deleted yet, we have 14 employees that have left or been terminated within the last couple of years or a year and a half. So, but, but on the, on the, what we're looking at, because the big thing in the water, you know, as we know, we've discussed the water loss. So we were talking about this year coming in in-house, what we've been doing is and, and to make the big push with our equipment with when we have time to find those leaks. Uh, the leaks we, we know that appear we've repaired. But, but uh, you know, we've, we've made some headway. We've kept pace at least. But, you know, that's what I'm proposing in this is, you know, the first thing on for the distribution system is bringing in professional help uh, to speed the process up to to get out and try to f to find these leaks, identify our problems, and uh, and, and get them repaired. And, and from that point, we can kind of look at you know we're going we need to look at with funding of uh, we, like we've talked before of, of dropping the pressure, different ways to reduce that loss. Uh, and we're looking. Uh, our department, 21 water, uh, it's, it's the cost to Carol Boone is like 68% every year of the department is buying the water. So if <clears throat> we're talking, if we drop that in half, we're talking of, of close to $100,000 savings. So, uh, so that's that's kind of where we are. The other alternative is keeping with our older uh, Terry. Well, I just, I just, uh, I wanted to ask about this. Um, I mean, that's we thought we were going to resolve a lot of that with the meters, and so far we, you know, we we know that we're billing correctly now, anyway. But we still, we didn't correct a whole lot of that. Some, I'm sure, but right. But uh, can you explain to me what this, what? What this survey is, what they do for twenty-five thousand dollars? Do they do they use cameras and go into the water lines, or what? Well, it's it's kind of basically the, the same thing that we're doing. But I mean, you're you're listing, you're correlating, but it's with better equipment and better trained personnel, and and and, and going in. If and if, if they have infrared, where if 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 some point we needed to invest more, and hopefully we won't, that we could we could up that cost to try to find it but but the technology is the affordable technology is you know you start you're listening on everything and you're, you're running a, a, a pulse through the line once you identify of course you have to know the type of the size of pipe and everything that you're looking at and, and to pinpoint those leaks so it, it's it's basically what we've been attempting but you know, we could get ahead of the game, and they can do it better. And a, and a training would be involved to where we could get our guys more involved in that. But uh, it's just the, the current technology that uh, they we're looking at. Well, I mean, I, I I still don't really have a real good handle on it. What is is, is the, do they inspect the tanks too? Do they? All in that same figure of twenty five thousand. Well, that's. I mean, they start from there, but I mean, that's going to be a water loss audit. That's going to be starting from the tanks out, the entire system. We're talking all the mains, hydrants, service lines. They'll look at the, the entire city, and, and identify, you know, where we're, we're having some loss. So they're they're you you feel they're really effective in what they do. I see what you say about Branson here, and that they they you know they went. Uh, from 33 to 21 percent. I mean, that's, that's yeah. They are uh, they are uh, spoke very highly of them. I, you know, I, I made contact with them, and, and of course, you know, there's there, there's like you said, there's still there's not a guarantee, but we know that you know we we know with some of the loss, like we've said, we have to flush the lines to keep a, the iron and magnesium out of there. 
uh, especially in the hot weather. There's there's other things, but we there's there's a loss that we can't identify, and we've we've found some and moved ahead. But there's some that's that's stuck. Well, well, let me ask point. you this: like the, the we know we've got a major leak on on Planer Hill, correct? Well, that that one large leak we repaired, we found that. Oh, we did. Yeah, well, that's there. There's like four patches that we're going to pour back up there, but it we we found that one, and it seems to. Maybe not to the extent I was hoping, but this this last month looks a lot better. You know, sales is up in what we bought, so we, it, it it made a difference. I think that one leak, you know, you could tell to that extent. We found a few more this year. Well, you know, what what I'm asking is, is will this come in and pinpoint other leaks in that same right, right, right. yeah, hill that say, okay, we've got. Yeah, we've that could be. We, we, we've got some water that's coming from up the hill, too, that we've never identified to some degree. So, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that's, they will come in and, 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 and they will find leaks. There's no doubt about that. But we need to find some substantial leaks, obviously. And well, yeah, obviously. Yeah, so, but, you know, the other option is, is, is we keep in-house and we keep plug, plugging away. But, but sometimes... Like you know it, um, you know, kind of like the meters, it, it, it saved us a lot of money, but it took a long time to get there. And this could be, you know, this, if you wait too long, then you're, you can have some leaks on the backside. So, you know, the, the key to really get ahead of that is, is identify them and get them fixed quickly and, and try to stay ahead of it. But, but within that, try to, try to get like we we're talking about getting the pressure down because there'll be some seepage and stuff that we could improve just by that and, and getting the system the mapping and prove that and, and 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 that could be part of the process this kind of starts it you know uh, but uh, otherwise that's what we originally came into this year we said we're going to see what we can do and then we may have to ask for help but we didn't we didn't realize we, we have an opportunity with some funding to move ahead, I think it, you know, it would make sense to get ahead of this thing before, you know, it's, I mean, we're, we're, we're not getting any worse, and we have made some improvements over the last 10 years, but we're not where we want to be. Mr. Mitchell? You know, the problem with being on this council too long is I remember your first time coming in here before the meters. So sorry. I'm not going to bring that up again personally. <laughs> But, you know, we did get, what, $400,000 worth of new meters after about three years. And we thought that was going to fix the big leaks at the time, but turned out it didn't. And then council got you the water leak thing and everything, and it, t it took a good while to fix it. And I understand the study, and I, 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 I support it. I really do. And it's great to have the study, but you know what I worry about? is that there'll be fixes after we pay for the study. I mean, it's great to have it, but if we're not going to have the resources, you're down, you've swapped out 14 people, and, and I understand the employment issues and, and all the concerns you have. I, I mean, I do understand that. And we have a plan, well, the finance guy isn't here, obviously, that you'll have the I&I &I funds for the next five years, I think pretty much it's 100% of them, that's going to go into fixing the leaks, whatever amount you can get fixed for that money. <clears throat> but then after five years, when we paid the bonds off, as I recall, that jumped up to about almost five, dollars $600,000. There was a, a lot of money going to come out after those bonds are paid off. And that was the whole emphasis for us to pass that ordinance with the, with the amortization schedule and all was to pay down the bonds. had nothing to do with being afraid of the SEC or anything like that. It was to be financially astute about paying off a, a major portion of debt and then really having a large amount of money to hit it, to really fix it. So um, the only, the I only would question. hope that there is a plan as soon as this study could be done that uh, starts the repairs and I, I am worried again because of what happened with the meters and trying to do them internally it got done but come on three years later was rough right right and, and you know it was longer than we anticipated but that as you recall the meter money 
it came you know out of the sky kind of like this we had some money and there was the options sure. of course the previous administration we put pipe in we put meters and and we said you know it could be from 10 to 50 percent on the on the meters and and obviously we, <laughs> we didn't but we uh some of that rolled back and of course people you know they, they fixed some of their leaks that obviously once the larger users or everybody once your your bills jumped up they they took out and fixed those things mm -hmm. so then some of that of course dropped but you're correct but that's what I was saying if like you said if we get ahead and we and we're going to put money into pipe and, and infrastructure if we don't have the, the apartment to back that up sustain it keep it going mm -hmm. you know in the long run that's that's not sustainable it is, and we just continue buying a lot of water that we're losing. Right, and, right. And nobody ever expected 100%. We were just hoping, I think, as I recall, originally started this to get down to about, what, 20, 25% loss. Yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, you're going to obviously, you know, to run, of course, and, and we're talking a percentage of the water sold, and we're smaller, yeah. too. But, yes, you're going to obviously, part of doing business is it's always seepage, and you're going to lose water. Yeah. But not to that extent, so... Uh, but but that's the thing I mean we, we talked about it before if we wait you know we, we we pay the bonds all the way off and we wait for 10 years where are we going to be in 10 years we hope to I think we had it five years you'll still have the I and I and I money for these five years plus at the end of five years you'll really have that huge jump and so you know some project that really can apply it uh, Yeah, and then also with the new meters, I think you caught some abuse and you cleaned up a lot of stuff with those meters. And, and yeah. hopefully, so are all the meters installed now? Yeah, there's there's a few residential that we're knocking out, but right. essentially that's the they're in, and, and that's the, our, like you said, the, that's what we uh, the results we received, uh, you know. Okay. So, uh, but it was on the other side. They will, they were going to pay for themselves. It's just going to sure. take longer than we thought. So it is. You know, and, and and we're ahead of that game for 20 years. So oh, it was, we had to buy the meters at some point. I mean, right. you you made a good case for those horrible meters we had. I mean, it, it had to be done. It's just we didn't get the amount of savings that we thought we were going to get. Right, okay. right, and that's and that's what we, like you said, to, at, at this point too, trying to make sure that we use that that funding. You know, where we do get some savings, we do find those leaks. We don't want to. We don't want to come in, and, and that's and there's there's other firms that they could come in, but these guys they have a good track record, and that's who I hope we could use. And it's kind of a partnership, and we'll have to show them where the, where these lines are located, and then and go from there. But uh, there's no guarantee. Question there then: Can the I and I funds be used to to pay the, for this company to come in? Yeah, that's part of part of the infrastructure and finding the leaks. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Ms. Snyder? Um, if we have them come in and look, at least we can then be prepared for where the worst possible problems are. So when something hits the fan, we know where to look first. <laughs> right. <laughs> and know? that's we. So that would help. You know, of course, we've identified the, the greatest loss. Of course, we already knew that, but we've identified it's kind of downtown and, uh, and it's a lot higher pressure areas. It's the older part of town so as you get down in the basin the older stuff and and we've we, we've run pricing on maybe you know taking out some of the original six inch cast the spring and it's very you get you're starting into a quite a project yeah. but you know that's something if like you said if we identify it and if, if if we make the splash come back and then if we're saying it in an area and then we could install some meters within the system to try to keep track of that area try to stay ahead of it so there's ways if you get into it and we got a grant several years ago from the, the uh, health department and we, we shot all our valves which we, we never had a valve map we shot them uh, and and but there's never any funding to, to move ahead and, and tie the system into that GPS and, and at some point you know, we're running off of the 1980s maps that we've updated. We we update as we go. We draw them in ourselves, and 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 to, to some extent, we don't need engineering on that. But that's something that, like you said, you know, 
the equipment within the guys, the trained personnel. That's something we want to we want to get together. You know, that's a that's been a goal. Like David said, when I started, a lot of these goals were there ten years ago, yeah. and we just can't afford okay, them. Okay, well that kind of leads into. I don't think any of us know what this is. This compact logics controller thingy. <laughs> what well, my question is, if we don't put this thing in and hook it up, what's an upset <laughs> event? Does that mean the whole yeah. town just goes <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a, that's a, we're talking Leatherwood, East Leatherwood Creek. If 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 the plant gets upset, you could you could have a problem with your affluent, so which we definitely don't want to have. We're talking, so part of that that we made. English, please. Yeah. We're talking about the wastewater, and then we just had an incident where we had a, a comp card burn out down there. And this this thing is 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 based off uh, on timing. It's all run off the computer, so it, it's it's more relying on a, on an individual to get it set. But once you're going, I mean. It's it's nonstop. It's it's based off of flow, but without so we're talking those that software never has been updated. It just we haven't had to look at that, and we just had this part burn out. Uh, we were able to get back on online in pl any plenty of time, but uh, that's a fear of keeping that going. So when we're looking at right off the bat, we've got money. What do we need to do this? This is screaming at me that this needs to be taken well, care so of. And what happens if this fails? I think that's yeah, what. Well, yeah. oh, if you <laughs> yeah, can have an overflow and, and yeah. you'll, yeah. you're going to you're going to have uh, biosolids headed towards the lake, and you're going to we could be possibly fined. For you have EPA, EPA, like EPA all over us. Yeah, this is without wastewater. Without drinking water and stuff, or just wastewater. This that was wastewater, and and that's that's. But it's going to pollute everything. Well, no, I mean it's it, it'll get to the lake, but of course if. Your, your water eventually comes from the lake, but I'm not yeah, saying that we're going to pollute swim. your drinking water, but it's just that uh, <laughs> EPA would come in and probably give us a pretty hefty fine. Yeah, okay. So no, so this is really, really important is the point you're making. Right, right. I mean, we're okay. at the point. Did and we can get fined once for fluent running out at one time? Um, I don't think we got fined, but we certainly got dinged. There's a couple dinged. incidents I can think they, of. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was several years ago, but when, when I started, we were under a consent order, yeah. and, and, and that has been lifted. So, And uh, that was lifted last year, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't it? Yeah, a couple of years ago, I believe <laughs> now. A couple of years yeah. ago. So, Dwayne, is, we finally got that where we're not under the consent order that we'd been under for Years yeah, that was under for decades, it seemed. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and and of course they they could put us under. Of course they use that for everybody. And and yeah. and, and of course the, in the news everybody's probably you know Fort Smith is going through it right now. And and we had some of those requirements when we started, but we there was a little bond money left when I arrived, and and that helped us along on those lines. But that's long gone years ago. So yeah, that's that's something that. We've got to meet our requirements, and, and just like we were saying with the water on the wastewater side, we've got to meet those requirements on the collection system and make sure we don't have any backups in homes and, okay. and uh, something we have to stay up on. Okay, so basically are you asking for these two amounts, or are they covered, or what? Well, you know, we've, there, the, within the budget there was, there was a 50000 for the for the generator, and, and of course we, we're saying we could, we'd like to still do that too, but if, if not... To reevaluate re that, uh, there's other projects there we're looking at. Uh, you know, bulk storage where we could cut that down by a cost by a third if we can get ahead of that. I mean, that's a that's another large savings, as you know. I, I think the question that she was asking was yes, this is this amount is what he's he's is this requesting. A request for my money. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I can't I can't do anything unless you guys approve it. Obviously, yeah. Well, so. we have to know if you're requesting. Or just saying we're yeah. going to write a check. Uh, hold, hold, <laughs> All right, hold on, Mr. McClellan. That's, that's that's what I'm wanting to know. Do we have to approve this, or that just comes out of your office, doesn't and it? That's, that was it, my it, question. It, if it's I and I, why doesn't the mayor just do it? Yeah, I mean, I'm, it's especially on on the on what what I'm what I'm wanting is that if 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 the twenty five thousand goes out for the survey and we find the water leaks, so then we can take an aggressive approach to get them fixed you know, because if if we can if we can cut that 60% loss to 30% then 
then that saving is fifty thousand dollars a year. That pays. Yeah. You know, if you spend three hundred thousand dollars, it's going to pay it back in six years. Yeah, that, that, so, that would almost I mean, put it back about ninety thousand. Yeah, you're talking more than that. Even you're running well, the numbers for it takes from the money to save money. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I mean, yeah. What 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 do we do to get the ball rolling? I, I, if, if it's I and I funds, what, do we have to make a motion to even do it? Isn't that under the mayor's purview? So. You just I, do it. I think so. Well, I think because of the cost here, uh, we don't have the itemized uh, expenditures in the budget right now I mean all we're doing is bringing it in as revenue we don't have the expenses and now a anyway. mid-year budget yeah. review we can go ahead and address this uh, at that point in time I'm just this is to make the council aware of of uh, the procedure that Dwayne and I are suggesting that we go on I think make we need to move forward no. Post haste. I think that's yeah. well. I, with it. You wanted to know where we were, uh, and yeah. this was our the plan that Dwayne has come up with. Okay. Well, let's let's move forward aggressively. Right. So, what what do you want us to do to move forward? I think I can go ahead and take care of it at this point in time. That's okay. what I thought. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just making sure the council is aware of where we are. Okay. Oh yes. So, so can we, can we do, right. do it? <laughs> Yeah. Is there any other questions for Dwayne? No. Mm -mm. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Dwayne. You. Thanks very much. Uh, all right. Our next item is uh, discussion for the update on the appraisal. So moved. Get a second. Second. Um, I think the what I have I've located an appraiser and I've talked to him. <laughs> and right. he came back with uh, another question and and I need some help from the council on this. Um, it's going to be depends on whether or not we want to look at it appraised as commercial property or residential. For to get it appraised as residential, it needs a lot of work mm -hmm. to bring it up to date as residential. The fee for the appraisal is approximately five hundred dollars. To do a commercial appraisal, if we want to leave it as as offices and try to sell it as that, it's a fifteen hundred dollar fee. Mr. McClung. Regardless of how you effectively have the property appraised, it should come out to the same dollars one way or the other. I don't. Uh, you're the real estate <laughs> person, you know. Yeah. You know, it's worth what it's worth. Is it worth more as a commercial or commercial as residential? It's worth what it's worth. <laughs> it's highest yeah. and best use. Well, what is the highest and best use? Commercial. Well, but you can, you can, you can. You can appraise it as a residential. It should still come out with the same value. Well, there's a lot of work that needs to be done to make it a residential well, okay, property. Okay, but uh, I mean that's what I was told. Okay. I'm just telling well, you what the, the appraiser said. Appraiser, Ms. Snyder. Okay, didn't it go from residential to office? I think so. I, I used to be the nuns headquarters, but that was years oh, ago. Okay. How is it zoned, um, by the way? Huh? How is it zoned? I bet it's zoned residential. I bet it is too. Wait, wait, wait. Can I continue? Yes. Okay. The various entities that have more or less let us know that they're interested, was that as a residential or as a commercial? They were looking at re leasing it as a doctor's office. Office. So that would be commercial. That's commercial. Can we not, without an appraisal, or because we're city, do we have to have an appraisal? Couldn't we just say, okay, we're going to slap? I have no idea what fees. We are we, being, but we went through this. We went through this before. I would, I felt more comfortable having an appraisal on it. But you, we can, well, you can sell anything you want and put a price on well, it and you it. What I'm is we have very experienced people that can look at it and say, normally this would sell for X amount of dollars. Can we not just save any appraisal money and say it's as is and this is what we're charging if you want it you pay this amount it's yours do what you need to sure we can always do that we can do whatever the council wants but i mean but legally we could do that as a city entity yes Ms. green it, it's zoned residential it, it would have to get a cup to be well it's been used it's been used as one so right. it'd be grandfathered in at this point in time because the use is still there it hadn't changed the use okay but if we want to have it appraised as commercial we've got to rezone it 
I mean, unless it's only for doctor's office. Well, it's only be for doctor's office. It's the only thing it would be used for. Most people that are going to sell a property in this town take three of the top realtors and have them come in and give an appraisal. We can't do that. You can't? No. Okay. Why can't we just get a general idea from three realtors? No. That still can't do that. That's why why we're looking at the appraisal. Why? Why can't we do that? Because you can't. You're, you're you're subjecting certain other real estate. If I pick three, three others are going to complain that they weren't involved. Do we have to, if they appraise it for 100000 do we have to sell it for that, or can we sell it for what we want? We can sell it for whatever we want. We can sell it for $10. Okay. Yeah. So we don't have to Or stick. we can sell it for a million dollars. We don't have to stick with an appraisal. Yeah, no. Mr. No. Mayor? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion that we... Uh, Hire an appraisal to do a commercial appraisal of the building. Let's let's Second. Let's, let's get off. Second. Let's move. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Any further discussion? All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. All right. Uh, brings us to uh, agendas. Mr. Mitchell. Yes. Uh, based on. The discussion we had tonight with the Elk City, um, not Elk City, Eureka Springs Community Center, I'd like to put on the agenda the uh, recension of the motion of January the 8th. I'll second that. Okay. I uh, think way Mr. Uh, Thomas suggested the last time that we vote on each one of these. No, if you want to change it at the next meeting, you would have to vote on it. No, All right. Okay. I just want to make sure. <laughs> it's actually, Robert Rhodes' voter doesn't address the agenda. I know. I you looked that at all the the meeting. All right. Anybody else? So we don't need to vote no. on that. We got a motion. Second. Yes, sir. Update on the auditorium remodel. Oh, yeah. Second. All right. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. Um, I would like to put on the agenda a discussion of a GPS sign at all the entranceways where it shows welcome to Eureka and the population, warning them about using their GPS. I've been pushing for this for years. I'll second that one. Just a discussion at this point. Okay. Anybody else? All right, hearing none, City Council comments. Mr. McClellan. Uh, thank you. Mr. Thomas. Mr. McClellan will kill me if I talk <laughs> for more than a minute. No, the game's been canceled. <laughs> oh, okay. It's all right. Has it? No, I have no comments. <laughs> I, I got the delay. I didn't get that one. All right, you can talk. Uh, we're, we can be here all night now. We don't care. Oh. <laughs> no, I have no. uh, all right. Thank you, Ms. Snyder. Um, today, in 1879, was the Battle of Little Bighorn, and it was also the day the Korean War started in 1950. Yeah, Custer lost. I kind of feel like oh, <laughs> the Korean War. <laughs> I kind of feel like we're right back there. <laughs> That's all. Ms. Green? No. I mean, <laughs> it's been a long night. <laughs> All right. Mr. Mitchell? Uh, no, not for this meeting. <laughs> okay. Um, we have, uh, on the 30th, we've got the Historic Museum Birthday Strokes from 5 to 8 p.m. It's a walking tour that the uh, museum does. Um, and then on the 4th, we have the 4th of July parade starting at 10 o'clock from the library down, following the pie contest. Uh, and that's always interesting. Um, and then on the 7th. Wait a slow down. When was the whoop, parade? The parade's on the uh, 4th of July. Time. Uh, 10 o'clock. Okay, I put a or p.m. Okay. A.m. <laughs> uh, and on the 7th, the opera in the Ozark Cinderella will be presented in the auditorium at 2 o'clock. Uh, and then also on the 7th, that evening, it's drumming in the park from 6 to 8 p.m. And I also wanted to kind of give an update to the council and to the citizens. We've been working down at Flint Street um, 
repairing our uh, creek tunnel down there. And uh, during the excavation, uh, we have an archaeologist on site full time during the excavation. And I was a little upset that the, that requirement was there. But since then, we've discovered two vehicles in the ditch, in the tunnel. Or not in the tunnel, but in the excavation. Is anyone in them? <laughs> no, but, but we found a nice, complete jug. Uh, it's intact. Uh, it's about 12 inches by 8 inches in round. And what's With that? a nice handle. The jug was empty. Uh, and so we're not sure if the jug and the car had anything to do with each other or not. <laughs> so wait a minute, so where the road the was, there's cars Yeah, there was a underneath. creek, and, and evidently the, the car went down into the creek. So what are we going to do with the car? And the license plate is a 1928 license plate. Oh, Whoa. Uh, Can we get pictures? The car was pretty much... Uh, all rusty, and so when we pulled it out, it came out in pieces. But Aww. there's two engines uh, complete, and the engines were hand, cr hand crank oh, cool. motors, uh, which is kind of unique. I've always said that there's no telling what, what's in these underneath these parking lots <laughs> that they'd fill them with. So we know now it's not only tires, but also the complete car. <laughs> also, they found bits of newspapers. Um, and the archaeologist is going to take that back and see if he can piece it together. So it's actually cool. kind of exciting. And a lot of this equipment is, or the artifacts, uh, are going to be given to the city. And, uh, and then we'll go ahead and donate it probably to the museum. But I thought it was pretty exciting. I think that that's, so uh, neat. Mm -hmm. that's, we found a lot more artifacts there than we did here in the auditorium. So anyway, <laughs> that's all I have. That's the update on that. Um, Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So much. Thank you. Why'd they cancel the game? Huh? Gary. What time is it? Yes, it was. Rain. 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 That's what I haven't done. I'm surprised. They don't want to go over that. But.